why are we willing to come down today and come and have this interview for FBB TV? Because I know it was going to be with you. <laughs> no, I think um, when I did some research about Football Beyond Borders and kind of I watched a couple of the other um, Ramirez and yeah. Gary Neville and I thought this looks like fun yeah. and something about this made me feel like it was the right thing to do. Who would you say is your best friend or the person you can relate to the most in the footballing industry? Rachel Yankee, she's someone that was a mentor for me growing up and she wasn't even told to be a mentor for me but yeah. she just was the way she is and with, with Yanks what you get is someone that's real yeah. and she doesn't kind of say things that she's not going to do and that's how I am too so I think from a young age Yanks always used to kind of give me her shirts and get me tickets for games and all yeah. those things so they those are the things that stuck with me. What's your advice for aspiring young female footballers who like wish to become professional? The number one thing you have to believe in yourself and believe that anything is possible if you put your mind to it and when you are kind of the way I am, the way I look, people automatically think because my hair is cut short that means I, I want to be like a guy and then I'm obviously my dad's black, my mum's white so it's like one of those things where a lot of people don't realise what you have to face when, you're in a, when, when you are a minority and I, I haven't been brought up where my family are like we are, you're a minority so you're not going to get equal opportunities but it is obvious that it is kind of harder for people like us to do things and but I never ever do stop let that stop me from being who I am. Surround yourself with the right people and the people that want you to be successful and I think those are the things that I've learned over my career growing up. I wouldn't have been as successful as I have been if it wasn't for my mum and dad. You just have to be focused on what you want to do and, and never let anybody stop you from dreaming. How did it make you feel when you got to go to Canada and take and represent your home country in the World Cup? I always get nervous every time a squad comes out, an announcement, and people used to say to me before the World Cup announcement, like, I was getting nervous and leading up to it, and people were like, you've got nothing to be nervous about, but yeah. I'm not like that. Yeah. I'm always one to kind of always think that opportunities, kind of, you have to work for it, and for me, I can only, all I can do is give myself the best possible opportunity, yeah. eat well, sleep well, train well, mm -hmm. to be picked and to get that phone call from Mark Sampson to say I've been selected for England for the World Cup yeah. after not playing for England for so long was honestly a dream come true. It's an amazing achievement. What are your hopes for, the, for football in England, uh, female football? Well, I hope it can continue to grow. If we can keep growing the game and Instead of after kind of the Olympics in 2012, everybody went to Wembley and watched the game, but then there was a drop off. And I hope that I don't think that will happen again because it just seems like the success of the team is getting higher and higher and higher. And I hope that it can continue to grow and I'll do everything I can to help that happen. Yeah, thank you for coming down to visit us today. I had a really good time interviewing you and it's nice to have that, the perspective of an actual footballer that's gone through it all and everything and have a nice 2016. Thank you, it's lovely.